Okay, we continue here talking about band duct, that is a very interesting argument. And uh, we start to make a deeper analysis of uh, the complete uh, stratigraphy of a nodule. So we just uh, see this nodule, we can distinguish easily the S1 faces with uh, globular chalcedony that have variation in thickness, lateral variation in thickness, and S2 bands that are uh, constituted by fibrous chalcedony that is white and is um, more crystalline. So for this reason, have more mm, constant thickness all around. And there is uh, one band, just one band, that have mm, some quartz, S3 faces of the sequence of the band, that is here, and we see the top of the band is ondulated, and this ondulation continue like a wave in the, the next two, three bands. But if we want to make a better and more deep analysis, we can try to make a, stra a real stratigraphy, bands by bands. So we can um, uh, make a sequence uh, starting from the first chalcedony layer, that is the faces one of the mm, of the agate faces. Then we have uh, three sequence composed by S1, S2, like one, two, three. The uh, S1 is composed of many, many, many lamina, but uh, almost no S2 between lamina. And then there is a, a complete sequence here, that is that one that has S1, S2, and S3, the quartz on the top, uh, that is uh, well seen from the ondulating of the band. And then there is seven bands of uh, very constant repetition of S1, S2 uh, alternation. So mm, <coughs> we can see here the first problem, the problem of the stratigraphy of the agate is that if a sequence of the band like this one, complete uh, sequence of the band, is uh, a wet-dry cycle mm, depending on weather, on rain, rainy event or rainy season, uh, what is a lamina? So this is always a problem in geology when uh, there is a sequence and when the, sequ the sequence is not complete, the presence, uh, for example, of uh, the repetition of a cutted sequence, uh, S1, 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 I is accumulation of S1 and we cannot distinguish Mm, how many sequences are. So maybe the single lamina is uh, a, a small heaven or event of uh, uh, hydration, of rain, of hum nocturnal humidity, one year, one... It's, it's not possible to know. So this is the first problem. In some cases, uh, the uh, scientific are counted thousand of lamina in one centimeter but we know that each lamina is not uh, really a band so it's a portion of the S1 fudges so you have to understand what happened here exactly more easy to understand this situation and we start uh, we try to make the same with another nodule we just mm, see this nodule about uh, the mm, behavior of color inside uh, an agate, but here we make the, the complete stratigraphy. So we have the first chalcedony layer, that is Faches 1, then there is here mm, some hemiagate, that is Faches 2a, and we can see they are very small, but they are on the top of first chalcedony layer, very small hemiagate here. Then we have three uh, sequence white uh, S1, S2. Then there is nine sequence also S1, S2, but a different color. They are pink, brown. There is three sequence in yellow color. Then there is 
the crystallization of, uh, of iron and we start again with uh, white sequence there is seven white sequence s1 s2 we see that there is uh, really a constant uh, behavior all, all the the sequence are s1 s2 there is no quartz but there is always the presence of s2 then there is three s1 s2 in violet color there is 30 s1 x2 in more blue pale blue color then there is the manganese band and the the, the last bands are uh, seven band seven sequence of the band s1 s2 and in the middle there is a small mm, mm, crystallization of quartz that is one s3 so mm, the total is 74 sequence so in uh, in a perfect world this would be 64 years so it's possible this true we, we, we never we will never know exactly we can they can be just 64 day of rain but this is just beginning okay so we can transform uh, the um, the analysis in a real uh, stratigraphy so this is look more similar to a, a sedimentary sequence with all the uh, event all in in uh, in, a uh, uh, in the same diagram this is the same as the picture before but just a different uh, representation so we take just the longer uh, section of the of the band duct so this is another nodule this is a Botswana Botswana typically are very constant in the in the sequence of the band but always <coughs> the S2 the presence of the S2 is very small for this reason S1 is dominant and they so important change in sickness so we have 32 sequence of the band uh, defined by the white band but uh, from here this is less than one centimeter to this sequence that is the same but this is almost six seven centimeter the first calcedony layer is very thin all around and this is typical of Botswana agate uh, another agate from a South African loc location we can make always the first calcedony layer here almost black then there is five sequence S1, S2 then there is two sequence that are complete S1, S2, S3 with some quartz crystals in the middle, in the top so we can see some undulated band here um, this is not the better picture but all this work I made with the microscope so we have at the end six sequence S1, S2 and then at the center there is one S1 a, a band of globular chalcedony but this is probably not the end because the cut is not uh, crossing the center of the agate so it probably it continues a little bit so we see here mm, the change are not so important because all the sequence are very similar but they are a little bit more crystalline than the Botswana agate and this is a Laker agate from Lake Superior and this is where the, the biggest problem are found because mm, the, uh, there is a very very thin mm, S2 band so here we can see this is a cabbage so it's, so it's not a complete agate but we can see mm, 30 sequence S1, S2, where the S2 are very, very thin bands, they make shadow, this kind of band. Then there is a thick um, sequence that, that is composed mainly of S1, so uh, a big uh, band of globular chalcedony. Then again, 18 S1, S2, more white band. So we can also. Um, interpret this 
like 1 mm, s1 and this like 1 s2 so in this case this would be four uh, sequence one s1 s2 another s1 s2 one small s1 s2 and then this bigger s1 s2 so here not only the the s1 is uh, pro uh, problematic because it's composed of many lamina but also the s2 is composed of a, a very thin alternation of very small uh, s2 band so mm, this is the kind of nodule that give more problem to count the uh, the units we can also try to mm, make to put in the same uh, sequence uh, all the uh, the big portion so in this case w we will would find just five uh, sequence s1 s2 where this is uh, a complete sequence from this base to this top this is another sequence from this base to this top so this is mm, quite difficult to to know um, but um, this is typical of small nodule so small nodule are also um, uh, with very few water inside and few water can can uh, dissolve a very small quantity of silica so is it, it is also possible that a very small agate we, we of few centimeter have a very very thin lamination um, more mm, uh, finely definite than a big agate that uh, can put inside many liters of water that uh, contain many many grams of silica so here in a 2-3 centimeter agate the quantity of silica is too small for make a real thick band so this is probably the case so in this case we are here in front of uh, uh, some change in some cyclicity in a phase more crystalline and a phase less crystalline but we have many 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 uh, sequence you know in this case we have almost 10 uh, 40 50 more than 60 60 mm, sequence in not five this is uh, an option we, we cannot know exactly this is another uh, agate from the laguna family is an agua nueva we see that uh, a part of the nodule is filled by um, by moss and then there is uh, an agate uh, with nice color but an analysis in this we discover that there is three cycle of three different color the, the purple the salmon color and the white so we we make the, uh, the stratigraphy of this nodule and we found uh, firstly we found this is the the correct orientation and the the most uh, uh, have been moved uh, slumped down in this direction so um, we say we see that the first calcedony layer can be a kind of cycle in the history of the agate then there is another cycle that is composed by uh, 17 sequence of uh, purple color then there is a quite a, a small stop another mm, kind of transparent uh, calcedony layer that look like a, another first calcedony layer with some e small emiagat at the base at the top at the top then uh, we have uh, 14 sequence of the salmon color and then again uh, uh, clear chalcedony and another uh, level of emiagat and then again 27 sequence with the quartz on top so this mm, set of uniform bands separated by some cons important f stasis that is uh, quite a change in the in the density of the colloidal solution uh, what what represent um, again we have the same problem 
to define uh, if the band is one day, one rainy uh, event, one season, or something like this. In any case, if the cycle is one year, this b this cycle is made in three years, and we may we can maybe add a couple of years for the for the first Chalcedony layer. If it if it just just a sequence represents an year, this is made in 57 years, and we can add maybe 30 percent, mm, so uh, maybe uh, 20 more years for the grow of this uh, first Chalcedony layer. So in this case, mm, we are not sure uh, if if the cycle is one event or rain or one season of rain, but uh, uh, I checked the uh, the weather for the Chihuahua Desert, and uh, mm, there is between 15 and 20 days of rain for each season that is compatible with this number. So could be three years, just three years. In any case, bet between three years and 57, this is a very, very fast event, and in geology there is almost no difference. So th what is clear is uh, that the, the filling of Fanagat is a very fast process. Okay, we make um, um, a definition for make a deeper analysis in the uh, geometry of the band, we define the centroid. The centroid um, is defined as the geometric point uh, that is the center of each band. So the, um, the first centroid is the center of the cavity, so it's easy to, to, draw, to draw by mm, uh, drawing some line crossing the the nodule and found and finding the, the central point. But then the the, uh, the bands grow not concentric in this nodule, so start to grow in this area, then grow from the top, then from the side, and only here there is more or less concentric banding. So e each point represents the center of one specific band. So the last point, the, the last centroid, is the center of the agate, uh, of the bands. So this is the center of the cavity, of the first band, and this is the center of the last band. So mm, this is a kind of fossil center, and the migration of the centroid is a visual way to understand mm, the movement of the growing of the the filling of the cavity. So this is uh, not uh, common at every uh, agate. For example, sedimentary agate have a uh, fixed centroid. Laguna agata also have fixed centroid, but Botswana agata have usually very uh, fast migrating centroid. So this is a way to understand and to see better the, the phase of the uh, growing of the uh, filling of the, uh, of the cavity. So this is the cavity, the first growing is almost on this side of the cavity, then there is a fast uh, growing only from one side, then mm, something, something change and it stop grow from this side and start to fill this, this void, and then again we move the centroid to the, to the right and the last portion is more or less concentric. So in this way, we can visualize some different phase of growth of the of the agate of the bands. So this is a very nice visual way to understand the history of the nodule. Obviously, you have to have a, a very good uh, cut of of the nodule, possibly orientate with vertical axis or have a better idea. Okay, um, now I, I would like to show you a very common theory that is um, a theory 
main, mainly from German uh, scientific, that is the theory of the origin of agate by auto-organization. So I want to tell you the, at the beginning that this theory does not work. I, it's, not, it's not true. But I want to explain, it, explain you why, because it's an important um, theme of uh, discussion between the scientific uh, today. So um, this, uh, uh, this theory uh, hypothesizes that uh, the banding as the result of the Lisigan ring inside uh, a cavity filled by gel. So this is um, this is probably the kind of agate that uh, are used for um, born this theory when some agata are very very thinly banded with very um, spectacularly uh, perfect banding. So uh, the, the the theory uh, use Lisigan ring or the Be of zawotinsky reaction that are two kind of chemical reaction in, in gel that are um, um, explain the diffusion inside gel. So the gel start to, uh, to be uh, uh, clean and then uh, appear this wave of chemical variation inside the gel. So the for the theory, the nodule is completely filled with gel, and after uh, uh, something happened, all the bands are formed together, and then uh, the connective channel, that is a very important structure for this theory, deform the bands, and after that, there is the hardening of the nodule altogether. So uh, this theory is not working for because of many problems. Um, uh, firstly, the volume of solute of silica that can fit in a solution is limited, so we cannot have in a single uh, a single uh, cavity filled by water. We cannot have enough silica to make all in in the state of gel. This is, is not possible because the, the solubility of silica in water uh, cannot uh, pass the almost around the 20 percent. So there is 80 percent of of the cavity that cannot be filled by solid. Um, also, we know that the bands are not all the same. We know that there is sequence of S1, S2, S3. A, S2, S3 are solid fibrous chalcedony and quartz, so mm, this kind of band cannot be deformed. Also we know that the channel is a relict structure Th that uh, grow by um, the superimposition of mm, many bands with um, the at the side of the, uh, the connection connective channel where uh, solution move solution um, diluted solution move and cannot uh, leave the chalcedony to crystallize in the point of the, the channel and also uh, moss and plume are not included in this model so mm, they are just uh, um, looking to the similarity of the geometry of this natural agata to this mm, experimental uh, phenomena. So, but this is just geometric. If we have a process growing around a point, any kind of process, geologic or chemical, the shape of the circle would be always the same. And there is other theory, uh, or variation of this theory, that assume some high temperature for the genesis of the agata. And uh, uh, this is impossible because we know that agate are formed at low temperature because they are present often in fossils and also because at high temperature the state of gel is destroyed. So we know that uh, Faches S1 in agate is in state of gel because it's sticky around uh, the cavity and is not crystalline, so it must be a gel. 
and uh, but it's only a portion of the sequence of the band and in uh, with any increase of temperature this gel would uh, be dissolved and destroyed and the uh, uh, the result would be uh, the, the falling down of the concentric banding that would be eventually make horizontal banding. So this is not possible. So um, in our theory, the, um, the uh, repetition of bands are uh, like many uh, geological phenomena that uh, show repetition of phenomena uh, that are called VARB. So we want to, to demonstrate that uh, the theory of VARB is better explaining the morphology of Agatha than the out-organization of German uh, scientific. The first uh, important thing is that there is not the formation of the band. So it's true that some uh, nodule induce to imagine that the band uh, have been deformed because look like to be folded and formed. But uh, do not exist any deformation of the band because we know that the only plastic uh, material is the uh, globular uh, chalcedony and the fibrous and the quartz are rigid. Um, we know that crystal, um, crystal domain uh, are a proof that this material is hard uh, and this uh, edge in, in be between the fiber means that this uh, agate cannot be uh, deformed in, in a plastic way. Also, more obviously, the presence of quartz cannot be deformed. So um, we cannot explain in, in, uh, a deformation only in some agate but not in other. And we know that uh, uh, really the, uh, the global chalcedony can be subject, uh, can, be suffer, can suffer a small kind of deformation, but is the little deformation that make flowing it between mm, concentric banding to the horizontal banding. And we know that these two fatches, the fibrous chalcedony and the quartz, are not deformed, but there is an increase in thickness of this um, portion of uh, globular uh, chalcedony. S but this is a very, very small phenomenon, a small scale. So there is not movement of old band. And another concept important is that there is no deformation of the channel. The channel is a relict structure and do not deform the band. Some sample induced to imagine that uh, uh, this channel have, have deformed this band uh, pushing um, toward the exterior of, of the nodule. But for example, this sample is clear that there is no deformation because we cannot deform this band until here and then this is not deformed, uh, the same of this one. So this is clearly mm, a channel that is closed because it's, it's not working uh, more. So uh, the, the edge of the channel act like a ripple. So here uh, I, I there is the connection with the new solution entering inside and where new solution arrive, calcedonic cannot be deposited. So this surface is an erosional surface not erosional by physics because the strength of this flow is very low, but erosional by chemistry because this solution is diluted and don't, do not permit uh, the deposition of uh, the colloidal uh, calcedon. So this is an, an erosional surface and mm, under current the band is deposited. So in also, if, if we accord with the supposed deformation, the deformation would be from inside to outside. For this reason, the scientific that like this theory c 
call the channel mm, as outflow channel or escape channel in the sense that they suppose something that push from inside to outside so mm, I don't understand any reason to think an overpressure inside the nodule that co could push outside something for with enough strength to fold the band also mm, in some cases are called uh, the channel are called inflow channels but this is not also too much correct mm, I think that connective is a better term because the fluid are free to enter and exit depending of the humidity uh, of the of the rock so uh, the, the channel exists because uh, water pass through the channel and the water can enter when it's raining and when it can start to flow out when when the soil starts to dry so um, our model uh, look the the agate uh, as a valve and we say that valve are, are a geological concept um, looking at repetition of phenomena so the first valve are um, glacial and there are a mud deposit on the bottom of the lake uh, of a small mud mm, bring from glacial so in during the winter wind br uh, bring ash to the glacier and this ash fall down during the uh, the, the melting of the the ice in print temps and uh, the result is a very thin sheet of mud so this sheet is uh, the uh, the result of one year so it's very important for study the uh, history the geological history of the deposition in the lake and also the evolution of the glacier and because every every valve is one year the same concept is used for study uh, the ice in an ice caps because every band is one year but uh, the valve are not so different than many kind of rings like rings in stalactite because also stalactite are formed by um, water that uh, drip fr from the cave and uh, not so different is the situation in, in a tree that are always um, a phenomena uh, depending o on the season so um, for this reason we we say that we can use the mm, the, uh, the method of dendrochronology for study the, the evolution of the agate also other minerals are banded like malachite but uh, is this band are not so different than a normal grow of crystal for example this crystal from Brazil that have many phantoms of chloride inside and uh, they show that mm, the, the quartz grow mm, band by band uh, they are crystalline band but uh, for sure this uh, event of growth depend of some kind of solution that pass to, through the cavity so there is not mm, it's not too difficult for me uh, understand that a slow uh, grow of um, repetition of small phenomena like uh, the, re the repetition of uh, growing of of the quartz or of the glacier can make a very homogeneous um, object like a, a very nice banded agate this is very common in geology okay uh, i think the the erroneous idea of the deformation of the band arise from some kind of agate that have mm, convolute band many s many mm, nodules look as they are deformed like this one but uh, the convolute band are just the result 
we see of uh, a very low crystallinity. So if the S1 um, are most important in the cavity, um, they show lateral variation in thickness, so any lateral variation corresponds to a kind of uh, more convolution of the band. I otherwise, if the crystallinity is high and uh, the S2 band are thicker, mm, the, uh, agata, the agate is forti a fortification agate. Without convolution, the centroid is continuous and is fixed. And this is also depending on the structure of the, the first chalcedony layer. When it's very flat, um, make more easy to have a continuous uh, banding. And where is a botroidal, like in this case, mm, they give the um, the uh, the possibility to the the band to have a, a very um, strong angle. So from any bubble of the botroids start one joint uh, between um, crystal domain. But without the high crystallinity, this um, botroidal chalcedony doesn't is not necessary. Um, and so why exists convolute binding? But, uh, convolute binding mm, depends from many uh, parameters. Uh, first, uh, the geometry of the cavity. Second is the sp we know that the bands uh, fill the space between moss or fill the space between moss and stalactite. So here we can see that we have strange shape in the bands depending on the shape of the cavity on the shape of the re remaining cavity when the filling found a cavity just occupied half occupied by concretion of calcedony of by stalactite so this is the result of very complex banding but one of the most important um, aspects for the convolution of the band is the presence of a big interruption of the band. Not a channel, but an in a real interruption of the band. Because in this case, the band are uh, obliged to uh, change very fast in of thickness until they reach the interruption. So uh, the interruption is a, a very strong concept in, the, in this uh, kind of agate. So we can see here many agate with very wide interruption of the band. These are all Botswana, these are Queensland. And the result is that uh, <coughs> the band have an aspect mm, more or less uh, strongly convoluted. So <coughs> this also is responsible if the we have many interruption uh, of the band of the uh, presence of localized growth. So if there is an interruption of the band here, and the ear calcedony cannot grow, and another interruption of the band here, where calcedony cannot grow, so all the growth is confined in this area. So we have a local growth. So in this nodule, we can see local growth in this direction, is in this direction, in this direction. This nodule, for example, grow only from the left side and uh, the right side is just after uh, after a while so why this is probably because uh, there is mm, uh, there is not uh, too much water for fill all the cavity so um, uh, the mm, uh, some portion of the cavity grow uh, in a, a way like calcedony concretion we just see this this sample where j only some mm, concretion uh, uh, occupy some portion of the of the cavity but also we can uh, imagine that um, e every interruption of the band uh, is uh, connected with a, with a fracture 
So we, we saw that um, the fracture in the Ostrog, the presence of a fracture in the Ostrog is responsible for the localization of the um, interruption of the band. So if we have here three main interruptions of the band, three or four, and this is a very wide interruption of the band, so we probably have in the Ostrog one, two, and three, four fracture crossing, crossing the, the, the cavity of the, of the agate. So um, the localized grow depend, uh, are defined by the interruption of the band, and the interruption of the band depend on the presence of fracture in the host rock. So this happens just when uh, the desiccation is fast, because I if we are in a case where mm, the access of water to the cavity is very easy, and the presence of a fracture doesn't change too much the situation. So the, the, the cavity will be always more or less filled by water. But in, in a dry uh, climate, uh, um, the, uh, uh, the presence of a, of a fracture change very fastly the possibility to, uh, re to the water for entering the cavity. So um, also there is other kind of uh, nodule that have uh, the this its uh, geometry depending of a fracture in the ostrock. This is the all of three are case where the, the fracture is is bypassing. So it's not only in one side but in the two sides. Uh, this is because we have uh, two interruption of the bands, one in front of the other. Um, it's difficult to find a nodule cut exactly in this, uh, but uh, I found many. So these two interruption of the band make possible that the nodule grow only in two sides and cannot grow in near the interruption. So this is another uh, geometry depending on the fracture in the ostrock. So resuming, the influence of fracture in the Ostrock uh, is very strong in some kind of geometry. So one uh, uh, kind of geometry is when the, uh, the fracture is responsible for a, a fast dilution and uh, the transformation of co the concentric band in horizontal banding. But this horizontal banding, when reach the entry point of water near the fracture, uh, close it, and then mm, the the band, uh, the agate flip uh, to a concentric situation. So this is re this kind of fracture lateral is re responsible of this kind of agate, or this is the, a different cut of the same that have the half inferior uh, uh, portion made of horizontal banding and the upper portion made of uh, concentric banding. But without dilution, in a more dry case, we can have many uh, different cases where uh, a fracture is consistent with, for explain, the strange uh, grow of the, uh, of the band. In this case, for example, only one side grow, probably there is a fracture near the board of the other side that mm, uh, not, do not allow to, to grow uh, almost at the beginning to grow on this side, and this is a bypassing fracture, but uh, the more complex situation can be explained by the sum of several fractures in the Ostrock that is uh, very uh, easy, very common to have a fracture in the, in, in the Ostrog. So uh, it's important to understand that this is only for the uh, climate arid, because uh, in, the, uh, in the wet climate, this uh, kind of uh, 
local grow and wine intrusion of the band doesn't arrive.